Hi, my name is Joe. I am a real American pilot. I'm a commercially rated pilot and a flight instructor. Uh, but today I'm going to be using the flight simulator, Microsoft Flight Simulator, and my Xbox S to do a flight over in America. I have the live weather and live time, but I'm actually in Tbilisi, Georgia. Georgia the country, not Georgia the state. It's 1 a.m. here, but I like to do a simulator flight that's it's kind of realistic over in America. I want to share with you the tools that I use. These are the real tools that I would use if I was doing a flight in America with the real airplane. I fly little airplanes like Cessna's 172's. Let me set up this flight, show you the tools I use, and then we'll fly it on the simulator. I'm going to be using tools like uh, Flight Plan Go. That's this app where I can see the entire United States. It's already put the charts in there for me. It's also overlaid the, the uh, prognostic chart so I can see where the weather's at. I pressed play so the weather's going to be moving. Let's zoom in. I'm going to be leaving the Fullerton Airport, which is in Southern California. It's close to Los Angeles. You can see it down there, KFUL. I also like this app, Flight Plan Go, because I can get information about airports. AFD, Airport Facility Directory, I can tap on that, and I can get information from the AFD. This is normally information you'll find in a little green book that you can take with you on the airplane, but even in real life when I'm flying the airplane, I'd take this app with my phone because it has all the information up to date and saved on my phone. I can uh, also do a flight plan, which I'll show you in a little bit, or I can point where I want to go. It'll just fill everything out for me, and then it'll tell me when and how to get there. Other tools I use, I'm going to use the FAA Temporary Flight Restrictions website so that I make sure I don't get intercepted by an F-16 and get shot down. I, that would be a bad way to die. Uh, in real life, I'd actually for sure check this website. So you see I'm down there in Southern California. I'd click on it down in the lower left of the map. It's going to zoom in. I'm going to click by Los Angeles again. It's going to zoom in and click in again. And I'll see the Los Angeles area. I can move the map around and see if there's anything like the president is in town or there's some sort of special event or ceremony where the you're just not abs you're absolutely not allowed to fly in there at all. So that's a very important website that I would use with a, a real flight. Uh, I'm going to cheat a little bit and use my internet so that I can get weather information, like a METAR, meteorological reports on my phone using websites. You see, I can update that and get updated information for Fullerton because I'm not going to be using the radio when I do this flight. I'm not going to be talking to ATC. That's one thing that's not realistic about this. Uh, also remember that this is not a flight lesson for you. You're basically just watching a flight instructor, commercial pilot, kind of a play practice, if you want to call it that, with the flight simulator. So don't take this as an actual uh, lesson. Things might be out of date or not up to date, but I'm trying to show you as much as possible what I would really uh, do in a real flight. You might want to put a, a POH on your phone. I, I brought this up, the Pilot's Operating Handbook with some checklists. There's all kinds of stuff in this book. Takeoff information, landing information. Uh, the, the actual, actual, actual one you'd want to use would be in the airplane behind the pilot's seat. That would be the actual book you want to use. But if you want to practice, you can use this poh uh, like a pdf i'm not going to be using checklist either by the way i'm just going to be doing that off the top of my head that's another thing that's not realistic here uh, this app flight plan go i have my charts built into the app but if you wanted to say for example get information about a military operations area you see those little blue and red boxes that are everywhere restricted and moas you could go to the actual FAA website and in my situation since I'm by Los Angeles download the Los Angeles sectional chart and I could look up you know this this is the actual full chart paper chart that I would have in the airplane with me and you can like see the times of day that they're active if you wanted to make it a little bit more realistic 
Now, I'm not going to be using that chart though. I'm just going to be using this app mostly because everything is built in. Let's go ahead and, and plan this flight. Like I said, we're going to start at Fullerton Airport. My destination is going to be IFP. I did a little bit of flight planning before I started talking to you, so I'd already been thinking about how I was going to get there. But I'll show you how I, I planned out my flight. I'm going from Fullerton to, what's it called, Bullhead City? Laughlin, Bullhead City, International IFP, which is kind of close to Las Vegas. You have Los Angeles is right here. We have Las Vegas here, Lake Mead here, the Colorado River, San Diego is down here. But let's make a more accurate flight plan. I'm going to be using pilotage and dead reckoning. Pilotage means using little radio towers to navigate, radio aids to navigation. I'll even be using the GPS, the G1000, a little bit. I don't like to use it too much because I'm trying to actually make it a little bit difficult for myself, a little bit old school, where it's just my eyeballs and a piece of paper and a pencil, just like I did when I first learned how to fly. So I'll intentionally make it a little bit more authentic, a little bit more old school, and just use the GPS kind of as, as a backup guidance. From Fullerton, I'm going to use the Paradise VOR, Radio Navigation 8. Just hold down the screen with my thumb. And there is a PTZ, a little star, that little fuzzy star, Navigational 8. And then let's go to Banning Airport. I'll hold my thumb down on the screen, Banning Airport. Yucca Valley, non-towered airport. I'll explain why I did this route, 29 Palms, Vortac. That's a radio navigational aid. Then I'm going to take a big I don't want to go so far, let's do Camino. Oh, it's not popping up, but I'll, I'll use the location, the latitude and longitude. And then let's go to Laughlin Bullhead. IFP. Now let me try to be quick about this, but I'll explain why, I, why I'm doing what I'm doing. Uh, the first thing I have to be careful of is this Class Bravo airspace that's above me. I have Class Bravo airspace for Los Angeles, LAX. You see it's coming down to 7,000 feet, 8,000 feet, 6,000 feet. So as I leave Fullerton, I need to make sure I don't climb too high. But I also need to be above 5,000 feet by the time I get to the Paradise Navigational Aid. I'll use the Prado Dam as a visual reference to make sure that I'm above the Ontario Class Charlie airspace. I also have March Air Force Base right here. It's up to 5,500 feet. So I need to be above 5,500 feet as I come across here. Or I could ask for permission to just transition through their airspace. That's just about enough, I think. As we're flying, I'll be able to talk a little bit more about how I decided to do this route. Let's get a navigational log printed out here. Nav log.
Oh, let's go back to map. Edit. Save file. Web. Save. Save file. Web. I'm going to take a picture of this nav log and I'm going to put it on my phone in the, the paint application so that as I'm flying I can write on it. It's going to be a VFR flight. Create the flight plan. I'm going to go up to 5,500 because I don't need to be at 7,500. Estimated time of departure. In Fullerton right now, it is 1.30 p.m. I'm going to leave at 1.45 p.m. Looks a little hazy there. Uh, is it 13? Maybe 13.45. Fuel is going to be five hours of fuel. One soul on board, just to me, one person. There's my route. Press for your nav log to be produced. Now, it's a little bit squashy. If you look on the right side, normally I'd be able to, let me turn the screen for a second. You see how there's ATA right there, but when I turn the screen, it gets, it gets squashed vertically. So I'll just write in the weather, the weather column. But what I'm going to be writing is the actual time of arrival, the ATA, there's ETE estimated time of arrival estimated time in route and then ATA's actual time of, of arrival. Let me get a picture of this and put it on my phone. I'm also not doing things like a weight imbalance. I'm not doing things like I'm not doing things like you know calculating my winds aloft where I'd use my little E6B circular calculator. I'm not doing that. I'm not getting a weather briefing. A weather briefing, I'd call, pick up the phone, I'd talk to a live person, I'd say, hey, I'm flying from here to here. Do you got any information for me, weather information, any uh, no TAMs, notice to airmen's, or any lights or airports or runways closed or broken, stuff like that. All right, we're, we're just about ready to go. Let's, I'm also not doing things like, so I said no ATC, no run up, no checklist. I'm not talking to ATC, uh, no walk around. I'm not walking around the airplane to, to check the airplane. All right, let's get this flight going. Where did I put? Okay, and I'll be able to write on my navigational log as I do this flight. Okay, let's go. Okay, we're leaving a little bit later than I was planning on. We're leaving about two hours later than before. Someone called me, so I had to take that call on my phone. But I love this. Look at this, the, the sun setting in the middle of the country. So we got to get going here because it's going to start getting dark out there in the desert. We're leaving Fullerton, which is near Los Angeles. KFUL. We're going to throw out the, the co pilot. Zero pounds. We're going to go full fuel. You can never have too much fuel. So 56 gallons. We have live weather. We don't care about ATC. We're not going to talk to ATC. I updated my flight plan just now. I, I pushed it back an hour and 40 minutes. Since we're flying over the desert, I'd throw a blanket in my... I'd get a blanket out of the car. I'd get a knife out of the car. Uh, a lighter... I'd have a couple of little water bottles because you don't want a big water bottle like a gallon jug because if you crash in the desert and you bust that one gallon, 
now you have no no water so it's better to have a bunch of little containers they don't break as easy let's get the airplane started this is also not real you know i don't normally i'd have to call to get ADIS to get my weather but i can just press here and it'll show me the the weather for the nearest airport get my altimeter setting two nine or eight eight let's get this airplane started sun's going to be going down in a couple of hours all right let's get this started get some electricity get the beacon on Get some strobe lights, some nav lights to warn people that we're about to start the airplane. Normally we have the, the fuel pump on. I want to start our airplane. There we go, we're started. Fuel pump off. Taxi light on. Let's turn on the rest of our electronics. We don't want to damage them by having them on when the engine starts. They might get a surge of electricity. I like to start some sort of timer somewhere when I start flying so that I have a timer that's the whole time the engine's been running. forgot if it was two nine or eight eight two nine or eight eight altimeter setting will get you killed that's one thing that'll get you killed oh perfect speaking of getting you killed I wanted to show you one thing as I was updating my flight plan look at here I went to the TFR website and look at this, it's popped up right there. Notice these two red circles just popped up and they're in Las Vegas and what they are is VIP Las Vegas and I think it's the president. So this is going to be certain date and time, basically saying, do not come near here. There's going to be VIP people here. So, and that's kind of close to where I'm going, right? Because I'm going, I'm going down here uh, to Bullhead City, to Laughlin. So it was kind of close to where I'm going. That could have got me shot down by an F-16 if I wasn't paying attention to that. Let me update my weather here at Fullerton. Where's the wind coming from? Oh, wind is basically no wind in no direction, so I can take off any runway. Let me go to the airport facility directory, airports, Fullerton. Left track, okay. Oh, let me set my altimeter. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go up to 5,500 feet. If you look at here, Ontario airspace, up to 5,000, up to 5,000. I'm going to paradise. I'm going to fly along here. So I need to be above 5,000, but I got to be careful because I have this class Bravo airspace right here that comes down to 8,000, down to 9,000, down to 7,000. Down to 6,000. 
right above me right here in Fullerton. So I'm not going to be going that high, but just something to to pay attention to. I don't want to be shooting straight up like a rocket up into that class Bravo airspace. Bravo airspace is for LAX airport, which is over to my west. So we're going to go up to 5,500. Also, if you'll notice right here, March Air Force Base goes up to 5,500. So uh, in real life, I could contact I could contact uh, SoCal Approach and tell them, hey, can I just pass through your Class Charlie airspace? Or I could go up to the north, or I could you know, just climb, climb above it to go around it. Also, as I depart, I'm going to head direct to the Paradise VOR, so I'm going to need that frequency. So let's do 5,500. 112.2. We're going to go up to 5. Five thousand five hundred. Oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do 1,100. Let me, I'll explain why. That's the traffic pattern altitude at Fullerton. And Flight level change. We'll climb out at 74 knots. Remember I said it's very hard to fly the simulator. It's actually harder than an actual airplane. So I use the autopilot to fly the airplane for me a lot, even inside the traffic pattern altitude. I'm looking at that sign back there. It says runway 6, runway 24. We're going to take off a of runway 24. So if we take off a runway 24, which is right there, after I turn left, I'm going to fly eastwardly 060, which is the opposite direction. So this is me basically setting the autopilot up to fly for me because it's, it's hard to fly the simulator. This way I can let the autopilot fly for me. And then let me set up Paradise VOR. I'm going to fly directly to that one one. On one two point two. Oh. You're not always able to get the radio signal on the ground. Um, PDZ. Normally, I'd listen to the. I'd listen to the, the Morse code. I'm not going to do that. That's another thing that's not realistic. What's the course? So from here, at, on the ground, flying to Paradise VOR, should be eastwardly. Should be right up, okay. So from here, I would fly 068. And that would take me straight to the, the Paradise Vortex, so. That's about it for that. Okay, we have our altitude set up. We have our airspeed set up. Let's go ahead and... I will... Sometimes I'll use the GPS kind of as a, a guidance, just to keep an eye on me. I did notice that there was a problem with this simulator. It was not showing It's not showing airspace, so there's some sort of a glitch or or they're they're working on this right now with Microsoft Flight Simulator there. So I'll, I'll use the GPS a little bit during the flight. Let's go ahead and get out of here. I started my time. Let me start my. Let me start my timer on my phone, my stopwatch. Start the time. We were departing at 1.2. Uh, no, thank you, dude. I don't need a, don't need a pushback.
I won't do a run up. I'm not going to check my engine and I'm not going to do the I'm not going to do the run up. Uh, there is a glitch I've noticed. If you notice in the lower right hand screen, it's showing my altimeter being set to 299 or 2. That's not accurate. If you go back inside the airplane, you'll see that I have it set to 29 or 88. So with as long as this glitch is there, I'm just going to go off of this inside altimeter. on our fuels on altimeter airspeed oh what time is it it's 3:30 leaving exactly 3:30 Speed's moving, instruments are in the green for the engine. 55 knots rotate. And let's put that nose at 74 knots. And I just noticed that the simulator did not give me full fuel, but that's okay. I'll still have enough fuel to to make it. Yeah, Five hundred feet. Still our crosswind. Downwind. Oh, I forgot to press the heading bugs. Oh. It's going to be tricky. Let's do autopilot and heading. So now it's going to. Let's just say vertical speed up. Okay. There you go. We're going to go up to 1,100. We're headed 060. Once we leave the traffic pattern, we can climb up to 5,500. Let's come off of that. You see, I gotta come off of that throttle a little bit. Let's go up to 5,500. And let's start flying directly to that VOR, that radio signal. So, nav to follow the VOR signal. And then up to 5,500. Let's climb at uh, 74 knots. Sorry, I changed my mind there. I was going to climb at 500 feet a minute. Then I was like, no, nah, let's just, let's just, and give it some throttle. OK, 
Okay, there we go. We left at uh, 3.30. So we left at 15.30 Fullerton time. It's going to be 15 minute leg till we get to the, the Paradise VOR. It's saying that uh, Paradise VOR will be flying 068 to it. And we'll, when we get there to the Paradise VOR, we're going to fly outbound 075 from it. It's estimating that we're going to burn three gallons of gas. Uh, wait. That's total. It's estimating that this leg will burn 2.2 .2 gallons of gas and we've burned three gallons total so far. And we have an hour and 38 minutes left of our flight. Now this class Charlie, the barrier's right there. Uh, the, the Prado Dam is a good outside reference point. I used to live in this area, Southern California, so I'm familiar with that what that dam looks like. And I need to be at uh, above 5,000 feet before I get there. Here's the water treatment plant. Water treatment plant, we are right, right here right now. Water treatment plant, and then we're looking for the dam. There's the water treatment plant right on my left wing tip. And then the dam is gonna be way up there by my left wing tip by that water. When I get to Paradise, I'm going to fly out at 075. So bear, uh, using my heading bug just as a reminder, I'm going to put that on 75. Just as a reminder, the bearing 2, radial out. So we fly 2 at 068 and we fly out at 075. Yeah, I used simulators a lot when I was learning to fly. I didn't have a lot of money. I actually learned to fly at the Fullerton Airport. That's the f airport where I soloed first, so that's a very uh, sentimental airport to me. We used to always come out here in this area, right where the airplane's at now, and practice. You actually got to be careful in this area because there's a lot of students out there practicing. There's different kinds of feelings you get when you fly. So I've only got a couple more hours of daytime here. So it's a different kind of feeling when you leave in the morning on a cross-country flight as a new pilot, as a student pilot. 
there's a feeling of you've got the whole day ahead of you. It's just going to be you, the airplane, your pencil, and your navigation log. And that's a different kind of feeling. Then there's that lunchtime kind of flight where you're just going to go out for a little bit. Then there's the evening flight where you're like, then with the evening flight, there's a feeling of you've got to get there before it gets dark. Because once it gets dark, the flying gets a lot more dangerous. Okay, we're at 5,500. There's the Prado Dam right on my Right on my right wing tip is the Prado Dam. There's Chino Airport on my left wing tip. 5,500, let's come back on that throttle a little bit. We're above 3,000 feet. I always forget to do this with a simulator. I need to lean out the mixture. I need to take some of the, the fuel out so there's not so much fuel going into the engine. And the way I learned to do it with the flight simulator is if you look up here, oh shoot. If you look up here at my RPM, you see 2,550. So watch what happens as I take the fuel out. As I put less fuel into the engine, Press my A button, I mean left trigger. Left trigger, left trigger, left trigger, left trigger. So you see it's going up. 2550, 2550, 2550, 2560. So we're actually getting more power as we take the fuel out. Even more power. More power. Tapping the left trigger on my control. And more power. More power. 2600. Oh, now we lost power, so that means I took too much fuel out. So I'm going to press the right trigger in a couple times. And we'll leave it right there. That's how I learned how to trim the airplane with the flight simulator. Normally, I'd be looking at the EGT. That would be moving. You can watch a video about leaning the mixture somewhere else, but with Microsoft, I'm just going by the, the power output of the airplane. It's not completely realistic yet. There's a Prado Dam at my right wing tip. Corona Airport. My right wing tip. So we are here right now. I see the Corona Airport. When we get to the Paradise VOR, we're going to turn our heading outwards from it. We're using the, the, the Vortec to help us navigate right now. I think one or two times in this flight, I'll use dead reckoning, which means I'm not using any radio navigational aids to guide my direction. That means I'm just using like a compass and the wind and I'm pointing somewhere and I'm just heading in that direction. But uh, when you use the navigational aids, you can get a little bit more accuracy. You don't drift as much. 
If you look right at my right wingtip, there's a flat brown circle on top of that hill. It's been leveled. That's where the VOR is. That's where the Paradise VOR is. Oh, you can also see it on the GPS. Normally I can get the GPS to show airspace, so I don't accidentally fly into airspace, but something's not working with it right now, so I can just use it for location. Like to see airports and see navigational aids like like paradise. So right there at my right wing tip, you can see the, the VOR. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the heading. Heading 075. And let me turn I turn my CDI 075. Okay. So um, that green line is almost right underneath my little airplane. So as I switch over to nav, the airplane's going to fly over to that green line and follow that green line away from the VOR, heading out at 075. Let me do my. Turn time twist so it'll talk check this so seventeen twenty so seventeen minutes. So we are it took us seventeen minutes. So we're two minutes late, but that was when we were on the ground getting ready to take off. And we should be eighteen minutes. To our next point, 33 minutes total in our flight. Our next point is going to be the, the Banning Airport. We will fly 076 to Banning and then we'll fly 047 out. So basically, if here's the Banning Airport, we're flying 076 to it and then when we get there we're going to fly more northwardly up 047. Let's look for uh, Riverside Airport and let's see what Auto Center is. There's the Riverside Airport at my left wing tip and Auto Center. I think that's what all this is down here. There's a lot of cars for sale down here on my left wing tip, right along the freeway. That's what they're calling Auto Center. Is that some sort of amphitheater or something? Oh, right at my tail tip, there's a, a football stadium, it looks like. Uh, football, football field.
Okay, we're gonna have we're gonna have a march and two waters. March and two waters. Now here's where I would just call SoCal Approach and say, hey, can we just pass through your airspace? I'm right at the top of their, I'm right at the top of their airspace. They go up to 5,500, I'm at 5,500, which reminds me I need to update my altimeter setting. Let me update altimeter. You constantly want to be up updating your altimeter setting as you fly so that your altimeter is set correctly. You're getting correct altitude readings. Okay, Riverside is six miles away, it's saying two niner, eight niner altimeter setting. Two niner, eight niner. Oh. Uh, so it does this. Uh, so it does this thing where it shoots way up. I just wanted it to go to 2989er and it goes all the way down to like 27 inches of mercury. This is where f flying the simulator is harder than the airplane. Two nine or eight niner. Okay, so now my altimeter is going to be correct. It's going to take me back down to fifty five hundred. <sighs> yeah, all I wanted to do was move a few. What do you call them? Fractions of an inch of mercury, and it, it'll just it'll go two inches off. And it's just one of the hard parts of having a simulator. That's why I fly with this Cessna with the G1000 is because it has an autopilot and I'm more interested in the, in the flow. There's March and then there's two waters. One water, two water. I'm more interested in the flow of the flight, and I'm interested in seeing if I'm going to miss major dangerous things that would get me killed. Like, what did I do the other day? The other day I landed at an airport that had snow covering the runway. I landed before a displaced threshold, which you're not supposed to do. That that ground's not meant for an airplane to land on it. But in the airport facility directory, it didn't. I don't think it showed it. So it catches you off guard enough to where you, you know that could have possibly gotten you killed in real life. Not not really, but that's it could have damaged the airplane, damaged the runway, something like that. It cost thousands of dollars in damage. So it's good to have things like that happen to you on the simulator because then uh, it's scared into you. It's you, you don't forget it as easily. So I, I like to do the simulator to, to catch myself making big navigational mistakes, uh, not catching big things, and then it sticks with you. And better to make those mistakes in the simulator than in the real airplane.
Okay, we're past the two waters. Or we're at the second water. We're at the second water. And we're going to be watching for these two freeways to be coming together. The 10 freeway and the 60 freeway. We're right next to the water. And then we go into this, this valley right here with some windmills. So in that valley up there is going to be the Banning Airport. It is right along the freeway. Uh, they have parachuters there. Yeah. Normally I would call on this frequency and let people know that I'm passing through that pass. It's probably pretty busy because you've got mountains here, big mountain here, 10,000 feet. So you're going to have a lot of people flying back through here. It'd be good to talk on that frequency to let people know, hey, I'm flying through the pass right now at 5,500 feet. When we get to Banning, we're going to fly 047 outward. So, let me go ahead and put that in my heading book, just as a reminder, 047. I can bring that throttle back, actually, it's pretty... Put it right there. There's the two freeways coming together at my left wingtip. And again, I used to live in this area, so I know what things look like. Once I get up to Laughlin, I'll start to get out of my normal area. I was going to look at the POH. What does it say about cruise? 21 to 2700 RPM. No more than 75% is recommended. We already leaned the mixture. Yeah, I'll just keep the, I'll just keep it right there in the middle of the green arc. So now our fuel's gonna be off because I thought we were gonna start with 56 gallons and we didn't start we started with half of that what's half of what's half a tank of 56 we're still going to have enough fuel it the nav log was estimating that we would it's estimating that we were going to burn total 15 gallons so half of 58, 25, 26, 29. So, tw so we left with 29 gallons, which is half of 58, which would have been full. And this is estimating that we're going to burn 14 plus 2 on the ground, so 16, which is not accurate. I know that we usually burn 11 gallons per hour. Well, this nav log is usually not burning enough. So we'll have enough fuel. You can adjust the fuel burn of the of the airplane in here. So that it, I'm I'm learning. I'm learning the fuel burn of the flight simulator airplane and It's usually been about 11 gallons per hour on the flight simulator. 
So I normally just say 5 hours, say 50, 56 divided by 11, and that's what I use for, for my fuel. Yeah, five hours. Okay, there's banning on my GPS, but let's look at, oh, there's, there it is right there too, on my display. And there it is right there at my left wingtip. Right here at my left wingtip is a nature reserve and we cannot be below 2,000 feet AGL above ground. So while normally when I get to Banning, I'd want to turn right to 047 degrees, but that would like run me real close to the top of that mountain. And I'd be really close, probably lower than 2,000 feet AGL. So what I'm going to do is when I turn to 047, after a short while, I'll shift my whole position to the east, three, five miles, and then keep the same direction, but shift around the mountain. There's the airport. When we get there, we'll do turn time, twist, throttle, talk. Let's go inside, let's turn to 047. Our time, and we'll check that in a second. Twist, we're not using any VORs and we're not talking to anyone. Throttle, we're not changing that. We're not changing our altitude or anything. So let's go back inside and do our time. Thirty-four minutes. One minute late. It's probably because I was sucking up so much gas back there, doing like a hundred fifteen knots when I had the when I had it like almost full throttle. Now I came off. Oh yeah, that's like I caught up because I had the throttle so high. So it's going to be fourteen minutes for this next leg. We estimate we'll have an hour left. We'll be 47 minutes into the flight. Next place is going to be Yucca Valley. We're going to be flying 0472 Yucca Valley. And when we get to Yucca Valley, we're going to fly more eastwardly. 047 for now and I wanted to tell you that nature reserve so you see the top of the mountain here 6,600 feet so we do not want to be getting near that top because we have this nature area right here we don't have to get too far away but let's just shuffle to the right a little bit let's go okay 047 let's go to the right a little bit I need to remember 047. I'll just use this as a memory aid. 
I'll put it at 047 to remind me where I was going. So basically what I'm going to do is we're just going to, we were going to go right there into the nature reserve. We're just going to shift over and then keep going 047 without getting within 2,000 feet of of this land. I think the nature reserve is actually like right up there. It's higher than we are right now. But we'll go back to zero four seven. We'll go back to zero four seven as long as I know I'm not gonna. scooting or scooting around this mountain. Then let's look for Morongo Valley. We know we should not be going past this highway. So to not go past highway, we should be going probably like right here since we moved to the east a little bit and then we're going to be looking for Morongo Valley maybe we'll look for this little squiggly part of the road it's straight it's straight for a long time squiggly Morongo Let's get back on course to z let's go back to zero four seven. Zero four seven, okay. There's the straight road on my right wing tip. It's going straight, right wing tip, right wing tip, and then it probably gets squiggly right up there in those in those hills. It's early, but I'm gonna see. Now, normally in a Cessna, I couldn't get this information because I wouldn't have Wi-Fi. I mean, this information I'd already have, but like when I use the web browser to look up inf weather information at the airport, I normally wouldn't have that information, for example. I think they do have that technology now if you, if you're, if you pay for it. So, uh, Bullhead City, Arizona. We got wind. 360 at 10. Altimeter. A little bit of a wind out there. It's kind of cold. Uh, 10 miles visibility. Clouds are way, way up there, if, if at all. I can start to... There's the squiggly straight, squiggly. 
then the road's going to come up this valley. So it's going to go along my left wing tip, going up there. You can also cheat. It's not che it's not cheating, but no. let's call it a. Well, that's that's probably it right there. What was I gonna say? What's the word? Not genuine flight experience, but a more. Uh, more authentic flight experience. I'm just using the GPS to monitor. Okay, and the wind was 360 at 10. So, it's coming from the north. I think what we're going to do, let me check the chart, 360, so, okay, no unusual traffic patterns, so that means we're going to be making left turns, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to approach the airport, 45 degree, Downward base final. Where's Mar Morongo Valley on the airport? So I'm pretty sure that this is Morongo Valley, that city right there. saying I'm flying towards it. So now we're going to look out the window and try to find an airport over there. Morongo Valley. And then Morongo Valley is back behind me. We'll cut across these hills and then we're going to look for where the road bends. Once we get to Yucca Valley we're going to fly out at 078. So we'll fly 0472 and then 078 out. Zero seven eight out and we'll I'm going to use this little guy to remind me when I get to the airport where I'm going to find 078. Sometimes equipment, if you're not using it, you can use it to help you remember stuff. So I'm looking for an airport. Over here. Should be right along the road. Now, depending on what you're doing, sometimes you can just cut the corner, but sometimes you want to make sure you fly to the point. The reason why I'm not too worried about being off a little bit here is because the next step I'm going to be using a nav... Oh, you know what? I do need to fly to the airport because it was important that from the airport I fly directly to the navigational aid. I think that might be it right there at my left wing tip. I see a long straight line. Let's fly over it a little. Oh yeah, there it is on my screen. 
what's the word when you do something in its original way? Not authentic, it's uh, not conservative. Oh, I gotta, you know what I gotta do real quick? Is I gotta get 29 palms tuned in 114.2. So let's go up here, 114.2. All 4.2, and then we're gonna fly. Why would you do that? All 4.2, and then we're gonna fly directly to that. So turn it until the green line's right in the middle, right, right there. There's our airport. Let's turn, let's just press nav, and we'll fly directly to the next VOR turn. Time twist throttle talk. We're not gonna talk to anyone. Well, we would have talked to that airport. We'd have said, hey, flying over the airport. Throttle talk, we're gonna keep it at 5,500. Let me double check. Made a mistake right there. I just caught that. Oh, see, look at that. Oh, I had it. I didn't check that it was the correct. Where is? There you go. there is that vortex is what are you doing that vortex is up here and I I turned this and I was like oh look I'm flying directly to it but I hadn't switched over from the paradise VOR to the 29 palms VOR so I would have just been sitting there flying in the wrong direction that's why you always need to identify it and make sure it's, you know, listen to the Morse code. And here in this situation, it even says 29 palms up there. Now let me do my time. We're at uh, 48, 48 minutes. Seventeen minutes to our next point, which is the twenty nine palms vortex. We're gonna fly directly to it, which was about about zero seven seven based on my paperwork, but here we're zero seven five, so that means if we're fine that means we're at two degrees to the south. That's where because I, I made that that mistake back there where we flew to the south for a second and then I finally got it back on course. We were two degrees to the south. When we fly out, we're gonna fly out at the zero two nine outbound. And it took us forty eight minutes. We were estimating forty seven, so not bad, we're just a minute behind schedule. 
29 degrees outbound. So let me put that in my... So 29 degrees. That's not the first time I've had that happen to me. That happened to me in the in the airplane before. Where I had two frequencies for two navigational aids, and they just about both showed that I was on course. So when I had the wrong one tuned in, I was like, I'm on course. I was like, no, you're not. You haven't flipped over to the the next the next frequency. Let me see if I can get an altimeter setting. It's been a little bit. It's been a while. It's gonna probably screw up and make me go off a bunch of... Roy Williams? No. Yucca Valley? No. Roseville? No. Twenty-one Palms, 12 miles away, is saying 30.01. So here's it's gonna screw up right here. Yeah, see it watched that. Why would you do that? It's like three zero zero one. Okay, three zero zero one, and I want to back it five thousand five hundred. Why would it be minus? I would never want sixty thousand feet below the sea. Why would you see what I'm saying? Okay, there you go. Five thousand five hundred feet. Altimeter is correct. We're headed towards the vortex. And yes, and that little diamond right there means that the signal is coming from in front of us, which means it's receiving TMP. Okay, good. And I got this road right here to my left. We're supposed to get there in we're supposed to get there at 104 and it is 55 so nine more minutes road to my left so this is that road basically don't lose that road there's a nature reserve too right here to my right so I don't want to get too close to those mountains so you can see it right so, Joshua Tree. Either that's Joshua Tree on my left, those buildings, or this is Joshua Tree. I'm going to go to the left a little bit for a second because I'm getting too close to those hills. That's gonna, I'm gonna get within 2,000 feet of that. I'm just gonna go to the left for a little bit. A little bit closer to this road. This is probably Joshua Tree. Where that little thing is. So I just gotta keep 2,000 feet between me and those mountains because it's like a nature reserve so let's recenter this guy and then okay got that line right under the airplane nav now it's going to keep flying towards that 5500 
Okay, now where was I? The nature reserve right there. And Vortak is up in front of us. Okay. So there's some water right there on my left wing tip. There's a little bit of water right there on my left wing tip. And that is That is probably this water right here, which means we're going to be coming up on 29 palms. And we have parachutes up there too. So realistically in real life, I'd be, I'd be listening to that frequency right now because they might be up there skydiving or something. It looks like there's also a little, a little private airport right there too. What I was going to show you was, okay, look at this restricted airspace right here. 2501D. You can go to the full chart that you download from the FAA. 2501D. Twenty-five hundred one d It's unlimited and continuous, which means it's all the way from the ground up to space, and it's continuous, and if you had any questions about it, second line, if you had any questions about it, you could contact 128.15, so, and it is right there to my left, so. So basically, if I were to fly like Oh yeah, that water is so basically where that water is, if I was to fly over there, you could get intercepted by an F-16 or something like that. So I would definitely want to use this road as a barrier. Do not fly north of that road until I'm down at the, the Vortac. So here's the airport. This is 29 Palms, looks like a, a T. And this airport looks like a T, so that's 29 palms. Oh, look at that road. The road has a, a zig. A zig and a zack. And then shortly thereafter, I'll be getting to the 29 palms vortex, which is next to some dry lake bed. The zig, so there's an airport on my left wingtip. There's the zig in the road on my left wing tip. And T29 Palms Vortac is right up there by my left wing tip by that dry lake bed. I don't know why I'm at 5,000. There you go. There's a mistake. Got screwing around with my altimeter so much. I. my altitude sink. I saw that 5,000, I thought, oh, it's 5,500, 5,000 is 5,500, but it wasn't going back. It was just leveling off. Wow. Yeah. Learning to fly. These are the best days when you're learning to fly. 
when you're out there by yourself. I think it's the commercial pilot cross country where you have to do part of it at nighttime or something like that. So you'll fly super far and then you'll, you'll intentionally wait for the sun to go down because you can't fly back. Yeah, or maybe that was just my, my situation. Maybe I needed some more nighttime flying, so I had to wait until the sun went down so I'd get a combination of long distance cross country, but also get some night hours, like a uh, two for one. And this is why you want to have more fuel. Because you don't want to be out here Getting lost. With five gallons of fuel left. And... And especially when you're doing things like using mountains, I'm, I'm using pilotage, I'm about to use a mountain up here as a reference point, so if I'm out here in the dark, I'd have to use GPS and my radio aids. So there is 29 Palms coming up, up in front of me. How are we doing? 75 knots. Also, you can recheck your you can recheck your fuel. Let me do this real quick. I might make sure I'm getting maximum power. So let's go in, in, in. Twenty three eighty, twenty three eighty. I'm losing power. Twenty three seventy, twenty three eighty. Left trigger, left trigger. Twenty three ninety, twenty four hundred. 2410, more power. 2420. 2430. 2440. 2430. Okay, I started to lose power, so that's. I'm starting to lose power there. Let's give it a little bit more gas now. There we go. So, what that means is that. The air had gotten thinner. And I had too much fuel because if I would have taken out that much fuel back back by banning, back by March, I would have you know almost killed the engine. I would have lost too much fuel. But here I was able to bring it back even more and actually get more power. So that must mean that the air is thinner out here. Drier, thinner, drier maybe, definitely thinner, definitely less, less oxygen. Okay, coming up on 29 palms, and then I'm going to turn to 029 uh, outbound when I get there. And you can see the little white dot right there on my left wingtip. I think that's it. And you look up here, you see the little green triangle. Once I get above the VOR, it's going to switch to off. You won't see it, and then you're going to see it switch to behind me. That means that was it, and that means I went over it. Okay, up here, you're going to see it switch. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. So that was it. I went above it. So let's turn, turn to 29, turn time, twist throttle tuck, turn, time, one hour, seven minutes, and we were estimating one hour, four minutes. seven minutes so it's going to be 
31 minutes, the next leg, pretty long leg. Uh, so we got 31 minutes to the next leg. Am I reading that wrong? 17 minutes to the next leg. What's the next? Next leg is going to be that little airport. That little airport out there. We're going to fly. First of all, you know what? Let me not run into this restricted airspace. So zero two nine out. Let me. Let me get this. It's very important that I follow this course. Okay, it's a little bit to the left of me, so I'm gonna fly over to the left and catch my course. It's very important that I stay on course here because right over here to my left is restricted airspace. Beautiful. Man, when I'm rich, I'm just going to fly every day. I fly every day. Okay, wake up. Engines, engines okay. Let me zoom this out a little bit because we're out here in the middle of nowhere. This guy. Okay, we're zero two nine. It's behind us. This okay, that's good. So there's a peak right here, four six two six, and that's this peak right here on my left wing tip. That's a good reference mark to make sure that I'm not going to enter this restricted airspace that's right here. I can use that peak as a, and it says numerous buildings, numerous buildings right there. Let me see, do I see numerous buildings? That's probably it, but that's probably what they mean right there on my left, my left wing tip, there's some buildings right there. gonna start getting dark out here but I think I might be wrong but I see up here I see a little mountain top 3239 and right out in front of me well, let me explain that differently I see 3239 and then I see a big 5325 mountain top and it looks like I'm going to fly right in between them. And if you look up here, I think that's the little one. And that's the big one. And it almost looks like we're set to fly right in between them. So I need to just basically look at that. And I'm going to be going right in between those peaks. I should have enough daylight to still use my dead reckoning. And I should be going right over the edge of this Katie's Lake. What is Katie's Lake is before the little mountain. So by my right wing tip, I see some whiteness out there. That's probably Katie's Lake. And right at my wing tip, it looks like the whiteness ends. So we're good about that. And then I wanted to check. Yep, 
Yeah, it's 31 minutes to the next waypoint, which means I'll be an hour and 35 minutes into my flight. And when I get there, I'll have 18 minutes remaining. Okay, I just was afraid that I was reading my nav log wrong or something. And we're, look, we're going to be looking for, after we get to that big peak, we're going to be looking for a private airport by the, by the 40. We've got a big highway here, a 40. Of electrical towers. Oh, what I could do as well is I could, um, I could use Jeff's Vortec and I could do a radio off of that. So let's we'll see, it's showing. Well, it was 145. So when I get to 145 from Jeff's, then I know I'm, I should be there. I'm, I'm around there. That is 114.4. And go ahead and get that set up so. So that as I come this way. One, three, five. From. 114.4 Put that into active Okay, GFS Jeffs So that's correct Come on now, we wanna I love this, I love being on here It's just you and and that engine and your water bottles and that lighter. Right now is when you're wishing that you threw an extra blanket in the airplane. Oh, there's some buildings over there. So if anything ever happened, I could just glide it over there to those buildings. Okay. Okay, I'm at zero two nine. One three five. So this one I can put one. Come on now, not that one. 135 from, okay. Go back to the other one. Okay. Oh no, go back to nav viewer. Follow it, keep following that VR. It it went back to just level wings level. Oh I should have put it on heading for a second and then fooled around with that other one. Okay, back on I'm back on VOR one. So what I wanted to do was this. Go to heading. I wanted to 
go to heading, and then I wanted to see where I'm at from. So I'm at, I'm at 180 from, and when I get to 135, I should be at that. I should be at that airport. Back to NAV. Let's back on VOR altitude. Let's check our engine. Okay. So we said we should be in between those mountains. VOR. Right after that, right after that big mountain top, it's going to be basically at the base of this peak. Right at the base of that peak. That's where the airport's going to be. Gotta keep an eye. If it's too dark, you gotta be careful about this guy. But I think Laughlin's gonna have enough lights. If if it was too too dark, I would just go up to like six thousand feet, so that you know you're clear of all things in this whole box, just to be safe. Okay, so next we're gonna I don't think there's gonna be much cars either on the 40. There might be a few cars out there, I don't know. Well, you know what, the 40, no, I take that back. The 40 is a very busy, a busy highway, so I would imagine there's going to be a lot of cars in there. I've taken that highway before to Laughlin. Five thousand five hundred. See if I can update my altimeter without screwing it up again. Okay. But I gotta be careful, I got two peaks here. I wanna make sure I'm not getting those confused. Just... Okay, three, three, two, nine. This is the three, three, two, nine guy right here. What's that road? Oh yeah. 3329, road and railroad tracks. Now we're hopping over to 5325. Five, and then there's going to be a smaller 4216 peak after that. 5325. That's almost my height. Which looks like that right in front of me. And if it was dark, dark, I wouldn't be at the same altitude as a mountain top. But I think I've got 30 more minutes of light. Okay, road. Two roads or power lines going in between. No. I got a road here, but no roads, power lines there. So we're gonna look for 
Two peaks and a road. Two peaks and a road. Also, another thing that could happen is I lose my signal. I could lose my signal from that vortex way back there because I got these hills right here. Uh, once I get on the other side of this hill, I could lose a signal. You gotta be careful of that. Okay. So, once I get clear of this top, I need to make sure I stay at a three. A thirty one heading. Let's get around this. Oh, I see some cars over there on my left wing tip. Let's get back where we were. It's still picking up the signal for now. I still see the little triangle behind me. Uh, but what will happen is you'll get comfortable out here. You get all relaxed and you won't notice it and it's lost the signal. See that we might lose the signal here a little bit, so let's get it lined up again and expect to lose the signal. Let's get back outside. So if I didn't know any better, I'd say Right at my left wing tip. Looks like a mountain tip. Okay, we just passed the big one. And then it gets. Then there's a little dirt road that should be right after it, and then halfway to the next big one, the 4,000 foot one. Any roads down here? So halfway, if it was halfway to that one right there by my left wing tip, that means the road would be right about here. And I have a big road off to my left. This looks like cars. So, we still have a signal. If I lost my engine, I'd just glide toward... Oh, you know what? That looks like a road right there. See my left wing tip? That looks like a road. There's lights on it. So you got a road. Yeah, there you go. Road on my left. Left wing tip. And what did I say? It's halfway in between. There's a big mountain top. Halfway in between is a road. And then there, the left wing tip is the 40... 400 foot mountain. Big mountain top, 4200, middle is a road, and then shortly thereafter, this road, I'm going to meet this road, and right about there is where the private airport's going to be. What is the Mountains, northwest, northeast, northeast. 
tower, taxiway Alpha 5 between taxiway Alpha, limited aircraft with wings best. Okay, it's talking about where airplanes can park, no radar services. Um, to traffic pattern altitude. Traffic pattern altitude for light aircraft, 1000 feet HEL. But whenever they say that, you gotta be careful. You see, it says 1000 feet HEL, but my altimeter is gonna show 1700, which means I'm gonna set my altimeter for 1800 1800 runway 340 Oh, uh, okay, I see it now Looking outside Okay, so we're going to eventually cross paths with the, the 40 right there. And I see that's happening outside. I see that road on my left wing tip going over there. And we're headed that way. And so that means right where my left wing tip is probably where that private airport's going to be. When you fly out here, you think if you, if you lost your engine and you landed right here, the difference between landing right here and landing on the other side of that hill closer to the, the freeway, just that little bit of difference would make your night so much more terrible. Like if you landed over here, you'd have to cross that whole awful thing in the dark. But if you landed over there next to the, the freeway, you'd be, you know, just an hour or two away from rescue. Now I got lights on my right side. What is that? And what is that right there on my left wing tip? Ah, okay. Left wing tip is that guy. Lights on my right wing tip are these guys. And I got the 40 and just about where they all cross that's where the private airport's going to be I thought it would take me 31 minutes to get there and I am at wait 132 so I should be there in 3 minutes according to my flight plan it said I'd get there at 135 it said I'd get there at 135 and I am at 133 and once I get there I'm going to fly I'm still getting a signal from the VOR but uh, that could have been a little bit of a you know 20 minutes just pure dead reckoning meaning it's just your compass the wind and your eyeballs So when I get to that private airport, I'm going to fly out it. Zero three zero. Basically what I got now, right now, I'm flying three, 31 degrees. When I get there, I'm going to fly out at 30 degrees. Thirty degrees out. Thirty degrees out, looking for the airport. Mm -hmm. 
so it was aware everything crossed. And everything crosses right there at my left wing tip. And it looks like right where the lights cross, that's where that private airport is. And there's another road in the distance, which I think is this one. So I got the close road, far road. Out here I got close road, far road. So I think I'm gonna head right here and look for the airport. Let's head to Oh, and on my screen I see the river. Right up here I see the Colorado River. I barely have enough light to be looking for a private airport. There it is. Left wing tip. There's a brown line. See, you would have never saw that in the dark. And you know what? I'm even surprised they have lights on these power lines so right like why would you have lights on random power lines so let me fly directly to this with the uh, heading off And I see some lights in the distance that are probably Laughlin. God, I love this fly. This is a great one where you get Look at this, you're getting the sunset. You get the desert, which is kind of spooky. It can it's beautiful, but also deadly at the same time. Then I got Laughlin in the sense, okay, let's turn to zero three zero. Oh, but there you go. We just lost the signal. See, no more signal. So, we just crossed. Let's do turn time twist throttle talk. We're going to stay at 5500 time. 136, 137. Two minutes late, and now we're on to our last leg. It's going to be 18, 18 minutes to Bullhead City. And I can still see the mountain out there. Zero three zero turn time twist or zero three zero throttle and talk. So I got not talking to anyone. I normally would be getting ready to talk to Laughlin here in a little bit. So I see the road turns around and then something going to the north ninety five. So I think I see this 95 right here, which is right at my left wing tip. We got 3600 right here, 
and I see so we got the got the two freeways connecting 3600 and then descend down to the airport so that looks like my last mountain right there where my left wing tip is and once I get past that I can go down to 3600 I mean I'll go down to uh, that low fuel uh, and I'll go down to 1800 so we can get it ready Say one thousand eight hundred. And get that ready. Oh shoot! And now I gotta update my altimeter too. It's gonna screw me up. One last time. We'll say. my airport lot there you go Laughlin 20 miles to go 2992 okay start descending and I'm trying to look for so I'm looking for this turn here and then when it straightens out so I can shoot for this point here where the river turns and then I can start to get line myself up with the runway and then come in at 45 degree angle and do my my downwind so looking for the the bend in the river and i should see a lot of buildings here because i have this densely populated area Obviously, look for the beacon, the airport beacon. Okay, back outside the airplane. Once we clear this mountain, we can drop down. Here we clear the mountain, let's go ahead and start descending at uh, 
Let's try a 500 feet a minute. So I've got a couple bins. Now where's my light? Okay, I see blue lights now. My right wing tip. I see... I see those blue lights right there, so... Here's my bend in the river. So... Oh, I see my... Uh, my reels, my R-E-I-L, runway and identifier lights. So I'm gonna head up here, get closer, and then I'll come in at a 45. Oh yeah, and my, my, obviously my GPS is verifying it. Oh, you know what I can do? I'll, I'll just, uh, oh no, never mind. I'll, I'll still use the autopilot to fly. I just need to remember that it's runway 340. Or what I can do is I can use my CDI, point that at 340, and that'll be like my little visual reminder. Nothing to hit out here. Cut my gas, my gumps, the gas, undercarriage, mixture. I, there you go. I almost forgot my mixture. Cause we're going down. I'm gonna go mixture rich. That's not the first time I've done that with the simulator. He just, oh, I'm not gonna use my checklist. I'm not gonna. And then you forget something critical like that. Landing light on. Strobes, gas undercarriage, mixture, seat belts. There's the airport right there. I just realized I should have done another weather check for the wind direction and I It's three six zero at twelve, so we're still gonna use we're still gonna use the three four zero runway. So it's twenty degrees off, twelve knots, a little windy. Use the autopilot to cheat and fly the airplane for me. Right up until the last minute. Oh, we gotta get down to try better than altitude. So let's take off heading. Let's get here. I'll take over the airplane. Let's 
Got him. 45 degrees. Let's get down to 1800. That's too fast. undercarriage. We don't have retractable gear. Let's get that throttle back up. Let's go to three. That's the opposite of three, four, zero. One, six, zero. Let's go ahead and put 10 degrees of flaps. Kind of windy, I think. I might just do 10 degrees of flaps. Let's get this. Let's fly by hand now. That's me turning the autopilot on and off. Okay, 174. We're high, we have four whites. And we're slow, so let's get the nose down. Let's get that throttle back. But keep our nose at. We've got the throttle set. Well, we're coming down to 74. Five. Oh, we want 70. Keep that throttle out. Four whites were too high. Get ready to start coming back in here with the throttle. Give a little bit of throttle. Get throttles back. Oops, should have should have given a little bit of left rudder. The simulator is hard.
let's get our flaps up, flaps all the way up. Let's get the strobes off. Landing light. So what we learned? We learned a couple of things. Be careful when you're switching your VORs over. It looks like you're on the new VOR, but you haven't even switched over frequencies. It would have been better to have full fuel. Make sure you don't let it get too dark on you when you're out in the desert, especially if you're using pilotage. Yeah, I guess 12 knot wind is pretty strong. It feels pretty strong right now. Keeps wanting to push the airplane. How do you want me to park here? Oh, I think I'm going to go around. Okay, let's see here. 55. We have a... Uh, 10. Alright, thank you for flying with me. That was, that was a pretty realistic flight. Now oh, let me do my time. That was a pretty realistic flight. The way I navigated, the way I was thinking, that was pretty much exactly like I would do in the real airplane. I wouldn't talk that much, but... But that's kind of the, the nature of pilotage and dead wrecking. It's just a process of where am I coming from? Where am I at? Where am I going? How am I going to go there? How am I going to leave? Checking your time. Uh, asking questions over and over again. Uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and ask me. Uh, I'd love for people to fly. Like, just, you can learn a lot from simulators. Uh, I've, I've used simulators for my real flight lessons for practicing. And I'll see you later.